Welcome to North Wales. In this series, I'll be taking you along with me on my adventures in this stunning pocket of the UK. I'll discover its heritage, explore its natural beauty from plants to coastlines, roaring rivers and towering mountains. I'll share with you our Airbnb Welsh cottage, try local delicacies, or whilst trying to get my head around the pronunciation of place names. To kick off the series, I'll be visiting the National Trust's Grade 1 listed Bodnant Gardens. If during the video you find yourself enjoying it, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel so that you can join me in my North Wales adventures. Good morning and welcome to Bodnant Gardens here in North Wales. It's a National Trust property, but this one is just beautiful gardens. And I think we've probably just come a few days after the peak of the Laburnum Arch, which is what it's quite well known for. But I think that there's supposed to be stunning grounds that keep on sprawling. So we're gonna have a wander and just check out what this place has got to offer. The gardens make up of 80 acres and they start off at the top here with these beautiful manicured lawns. I know that the rhododendrons are what's in the season at the moment but my understanding is that it's going to slip away on a hillside and it will open out to less formal areas than what we've got up here. So we'll keep on wandering and we'll keep exploring. <laughs> The smell in this little section here is so pungent and I think it's because the plants are at their peak and when combined with the fact that it's very recently rained, it's giving off a much stronger smell and the bees are absolutely loving this. The bees are buzzing around and amongst all of the flowers just collecting all of the pollen and nectar. These gardens are insanely beautiful. I would say that we have touched a tiny, tiny percentage of what it has to offer. Every time we go around a hedge or we turn a corner, it just seems to open out into an even more stunning space than what we've just come from. And we've passed things from beautiful ponds to cascading little waterfalls. There's beautiful, beautiful buildings which really help to mirror and complement the plants that are in here. And then you've got these sorts of walkways that I'm in and it's just absolutely stunning. It's really taken me by surprise. I, I knew about the Laburnum March and I knew that the rhododendrons were gonna be in bloom at the moment, but past those two things, I didn't really know what to expect from this place and it's completely blown me away. Mm -hmm. So even though it's not come out into flower yet, this one's a peony and what I find amusing is that over the little buds we can see small ants running around them and we do actually have a peony in our back garden, we didn't plant it, it was planted by the previous owner and at first we thought that there was something wrong with it because of the amount of ants that were crawling all over them. We later learned that actually it's because of the scent that it gives off and these have also got them and obviously you've got professional gardeners looking after these ones so it says to me that our peony in our back garden is just fine. The 
Hill behind me, I think is one of the most iconic spots here at Bodnan Gardens. And in the past, it was used as a summer house for an Elizabethan hunting lodge nearby. It's also been used as a manufacturing building and also a tannery. In the early 1900s though, it came into quite a bit of disarray and the McLaren family who owned the property were trying to raise money but weren't successful in doing so. But the National Trust has over the last few years been working on restoring the building and it's, it's so sad we're here right at the very end of May and next month in June is when it's going to first open up to members of the public where you should be able to go upstairs to be able to get that bird's eye view down onto these terrace gardens. We're just a few days too early, but still, it does look quite impressive in comparison to some of the old photographs of it looking rather derelict. This is stunning. We'd seen on the map that there was the place called the Waterfall Bridge, so I was expecting there to be a waterfall and I was expecting there to be a bridge, but I did not expect this huge blaze of colour. And then you've got this tree that's like crazily shaped as how it's grown. And then behind that, you've got a really beautiful pergola. This is absolutely stunning. Every time we keep on walking into another section, something completely different just pops out and surprises us. This is, I'm impressed, I'm really impressed with this. <laughs> That last bridge that we were at with a waterfall wasn't actually the waterfall bridge. It turns out that it's actually this one here. Whilst it does look very nice, I don't think it's quite as impressive as whatever that one was back upstream. <laughs> actually take it back if you get onto the downstream side of the waterfall bridge the colors on this side are absolutely stunning and then you've also got the view of the poem and it's the mausoleum where the original family who own this land are now buried that it has is what's known as a riverside dell and being honest I didn't know what a dell was so I've had to google it. The definition is that it's a valley often which has trees growing up the sides and in the bottom of it and that is where we are at the moment in the bottom of the valley. Even though I was really excited about that laburnum arch which we saw right at the very beginning and I thought that that was its main selling point I have to say for me personally I don't think it is for me is coming down into this dell alongside the river and getting to see all of the rhododendrons as well. It's lovely. Gardens comes from the house bit that's not actually owned by the National Trust and reminds me a little bit of Sheffield Park where again it was beautiful gardens. There was a house but it was privately owned and again here it is privately owned as well and it's, it's just in front of me. As you can see down the terraces you then have the sweeping views of the mountains in Snowdonia National Park. Really truly spectacular view from the house if you were lucky enough to live here. 